Tonight, let's talk about adding realism to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and X-Plane 11. Now, there are a lot of ways to do that. You could have a really big TV, a great computer, but what you really need to have are Flight Sim components. Now, I'm talking about yokes, joysticks, throttle quadrants, rudder pedals, hot tiles, all kinds of different things that you can use to take your flight sim time to the next level and try to be as realistic as possible. Because it's worth the investment depending on what your goals are. Now let's think about that. Now, there's so much out there. You have products from Honeycomb, you have project, products from Logitech, Thrustmaster, Ori, CH products. And I feel like there are probably like five or seven more things out there that are different types of things, whether the yokes, joysticks, or even mock-ups or emulations of actual avionics inside aircraft. So take a deep breath, grab a cup of tea, coffee, whatever you choose is your drink of choice. And sit down and enjoy this video because we're going to talk about just a handful of products that can take your flight simming to the next level. So let's start. Now, because Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is such a popular flight sim or to many people game, because you can go anywhere in the world, maybe even see your home, people are getting a chance to start off with flight simulation in the most simple and rudimentary of ways. Well, that way just so happens to be a Microsoft wireless controller for the Xbox. It works well, it's reasonable, and it's pretty easy to use. And as much as we like to use it for video games, it is not the go-to for flight simulation. It's, it's a start. And I mean, if that's all you got, it's all you got, and if this is a way for you to get your feet wet and start learning things about aviation, it's a good way to start. As simple as that, sim sim as simply put as can be. But if you want something a little bit more serious to add a lot of realism and start getting to the point where you are maybe considering flight simulation and, and using it for part of your flight training, like you want to be a pilot, you want to actually have a career in aviation, then I recommend you look at the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. Now, it's a joystick that has a lot of features that you would want for a basic joystick. It has roll, pitch, yaw on the center where you twist it back and forth. It has a throttle quadrant. It has programmable buttons, and it has a pretty sturdy base. Now, the Logitech Xtreme 3D Pro is a pretty good unit. I like it because it's not too big. The footprint overall is not too large. So if you have a confined space, maybe you're, you're using Flight Simulator 2020 or X-Plane on a laptop, and you really have a limited floor plan or desk space for use, this is a really good device to have. It's really simple. It does your roll, it does your pitch, like I said before, and yaw. Yaw being important because not just does it control the rudder and the air for the aircraft and on the ground, but it helps you taxi the airplane with the nose wheel. And that means left and right, kind of driving the airplane on the ground. Now, it works good, but is it the best thing? Well, I'd say for a basic setup, this is what you would go with. There are a lot of other products from Thrustmaster. There are products from Logitech and down the line. There's, there's really a lot of stuff out there that you can use to add into your flight simulator to make it more realistic. Now, the next product I'd like to talk about would be taking it from your basic setup to an intermediate setup. And when we talk about intermediate, you're gonna to to start adding things in. And there are three really important things that you want in your intermediate setup. That'll be a yoke or a joystick, throttle quadrant, and rudder pedals. Now, with those products talked about, there's one thing in particular I think you'll like, and I like it. It's one of the products I use on a regular basis when I'm using flight simulation, and that's going to be the Cessna yoke from SciTech. It's a legacy product from years ago. And the nice thing about this product is it goes a full 90 degrees of deflection for the roll, has a good centering spring for the pitch, and it has a lot of programmable buttons. Now, here it is here on my table with me. It's a good product. Now, it's not made new anymore, which is difficult because it was a good product. And there are a lot of other products out there right now. And I would say if I'm ranking them from top to bottom, I'd probably put Honeycomb Alpha Yoke at the top. 
and then followed by the Logitech Pro Flight yoke. That's basically the exact same thing as the uh, SciTech yoke from years ago, which was an okay yoke, but it had limitations. It wasn't exactly like an actual aircraft. It stopped at 45 degrees of roll. The centering spring was okay, but I need to say I have not tried out the actual new Logitech yoke. So with that said, I don't know how far it goes. It could go full 90 degrees. They may have changed the centering spring as well, making it a better product. Now, you also have CH products. They have two different yokes out there, and they're pretty good yokes as well. I have not used those in well over a decade, probably going on 15 years, maybe more. Uh, but my go-to for right now is the Cessna SciTech yoke that I've had for a pretty long while now. Uh, I'm looking forward to get my hands on an Alpha yoke sometime soon from Honeycomb. The honeycomb yoke, I like to take a look at it. It really bridges a gap between being just intermediate and advanced, which is something I really like and seems to be a good price for that kind of functionality. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about will be your throttle quadrants. I have three throttle quadrants here that I have at my disposal. The first one is the SciTech TPM module. Now the TPM module was basically a single engine setup for general aviation aircraft. You have your black lever that goes in and out for manifold pressure or if it's a non-complex aircraft, that'd be your throttle. You have the blue lever for the prop control and you have the red one for mixture, that's your fuel to air ratio. Now here I have it on my desk. It's a solid unit. They are pretty reliable. Mine has never had a problem. And I really enjoy the fact that they added switches onto this. However, I would recommend that if you were to get one of these used or new, if you could find it new, print out some labels for the switches because it's easy to forget exactly which one does what after a certain period of time, especially if you swap out parts like I do. But this is a good general aviation if you're going to be doing flying in a Skyhawk, a Cessna 172, Piper Archer, or something that's simple, or stepping up to even maybe a Cessna 182 and or a Piper Dakota. Lots of good aircraft that would really work well in a flight simulation with this unit itself. Now the next unit I have will be my legacy SciTech throttle quadrants. And these are set up for a twin engine general aviation aircraft. Now, basically what you can imagine is everything I said about the TPM being a single engine is gonna be true for the most part for these throttle quadrants. Now, if you take a look on my desk, I have these side by side. These are two paired together to make the multi-engine or twin engine setup. Again, manifold pressure, propeller control, and then your mixture for the fuel air ratio. These are pretty solid. They've lasted me the better part of a decade, if not more. Logitech, Logitech makes them now. And the great thing is they're definitely customizable. You can take the tops off and replace them. Uh, they have a reverser function all the way down at the bottom that works all right. And I'll hold up a little bit better so maybe you can actually see it. But as it comes down, there's a detent that you push further through and there's a separate button down there that actually activates the reversers if your aircraft has reversers. These work pretty well. They come in at a pretty nice price point, but overall they feel kind of flimsy. And I know back in the day when I was selling these for SciTech, you would get the occasional person that was having trouble with them. And some people actually crack them open and fix the problem. So if you found these used, there are tutorials that people put out there to fix these and get them going again. Do I suggest spending your hard-earned money on that? Not really. I'd recommend you find something new, whether it be Logitech or from Honeycomb. Now, the product that I'm most excited about actually using right now is from Honeycomb. It's the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. The Bravo Throttle Quadrant is a really interesting product in the fact that it, it bridges a gap between being just an intermediate piece and an advanced piece. Now, what takes it beyond being just an intermediate? Well, if you looked at the TPM and then you also looked at the SciTech throttle quadrants, now Logitech throttle quadrants, you're going to see that they're kind of limited in their functionality. They're really just 
couple of switches or buttons and the throttle quadrants. But once you start looking at the Bravo throttle quadrant from Honeycomb Aeronautical, you're going to see there are a lot of features built onto this. Now, on my table here now, hopefully you can actually get a decent view of this. The Bravo throttle quadrant has a lot of functionality to it. Not only does it have the manifold pressure, the propeller control, the mixture control, it has a go around button on the number one lever for the manifold pressure. It has a trim wheel built in. It has a landing gear toggle switch built in. It has autopilot functions, switches, autopilot on off switch, and flaps. Now, to drive all that, you're gonna need a plugin or a special program to run all that in either Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 or X-Plane 11. And I hear all that's coming along fine, and I'm sure it works just good. Now, this is something I'll be talking about more in the future, but if you are somebody that's trying to build a good flight simulator setup that's gonna last you for years to go, again, this is gonna sound like I'm just repeating myself, but it's for a good reason. Honeycomb Aeronautical is making the products that you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck, they're made out of quality materials and they're made by pilots for pilots. I've known some of the people behind these products and I believe in the way they're making them and the overall design ethos that they're going for here. And I like this product. I think it's a really good product and I like using it. So take a look at Honeycomb's website. I really recommend getting it on their pre-order. And this would be my go-to throttle quadrant. Now, to round out the intermediate setup, there's something else you are going to need. That next thing are going to be rudder pedals. Now, rudder pedals come in all different shapes and sizes, and they come from different manufacturers at this point. Now, that's nothing really new, and it's nothing to be afraid of, but I would say the field is kind of anemic right now. It looks like Honeycomb is going to have throttle, uh, rudder pedals coming out sometime this summer, is what I saw on their Instagram post for Flight SimCon in San Diego. And that's a nice thing because their rudder pedals actually look like rudder pedals from their aircraft slightly versus some of the other ones out there on the market right now. What you see in front of you, though, in this B-roll, are the Cessna rudder pedals from SciTech years ago. They're not for sale new, unfortunately, anymore, but those are the ones I use. Now. On my table now, I have those rudder pedals. And let's talk about a few features here. Now, earlier, I was talking about the Logitech Xtreme 3D Pro and about how you have the yaw, that you can twist the actual stick. It's a nice feature, and I'll dig in deeper into that into another video, really trying to explain the nuances and how that works and why it's really important. I'm going to break down the basics of each of these kind of flight controls to help you better make a choice of what's going to work for you. Now, with these rudder pedals, what strikes me most as being useful with these is that, first off, they have good toe brakes on top. Now, in the B-roll you saw there, that you can see the edges and the sides, and it looks like you can honestly put your feet on this, like a real rudder pedal on an actual aircraft, and they're not going to slide off the top, which cannot be said for Logitech's continuation of the SciTech line, and also for the CH products, rudder pedals as well. They're too flat and you gotta be careful because your feet will slip off the top, which is a real annoyance if you're on the ground taxing your airplane in the simulator. Now, Thrustmaster does have two different rudder pedals out. I have not tried either, but I would definitely look into them over the Logitech and the CH product rudder pedals for at least now. And once there's some kind of pre-order page up for Honeycomb's rudder pedals, which I just saw in a graphic on Instagram, I would get on on that pre-order because it looks like those at least look to emulate like these do, do or, in, or for some people did, because I know some people no longer have theirs, um, a real aircraft, which is important because at the end of the day, a flight simulator, if you're a student pilot or working on all your ratings, is meant to cut down on your cost of training time, hopefully. And I say hopefully, quote unquote. A flight simulator can cut out hours for each rating, potentially if you use it for the right thing. Now, if you can save anywhere from five, 10, 15 hours of flight time and instructor time, you've pretty much paid for your flight sim setup, especially if you already have a gaming PC or a gaming laptop at home. But I started to digress here. 
This piece, or pieces like it, round out the intermediate setup. Now, the intermediate setup, again, is going to be a yoke or joystick, throttle quadrant, or rudder pedals. Now, to take it to advanced, I don't have a lot of the products or pieces of products that I would really like to show you right now that I'm really excited that I found out about recently. But I have some of the basic ones that you can get from Logitech. Now, you're going to see in front of you the instrument panel from Logitech, the switch panel from Logitech, and the autopilot panel from Logitech. If you rewind the video, you'll see earlier the yoke I showed you had those on them. And I'm going to pull that back up now. And what you'll see is when you come back, right in front of me here, to my left, when you're looking at me, what looks to be my right, the switch panel, instrument panel, and the autopilot panel. Now, what these do are they allow you to do the basic core functions of the aircraft without having to use your mouse or keyboard to search around on your monitor to take away from your actual simulation time. So you'll be saving time by making an investment into a switch panel, an instrument panel, and the autopilot panel. Now, why would you do it? You're adding realism in to make it easier to understand how these systems work. Now, I get it. If you're just having fun with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, this is overkill. If you plan to do semi, you know, if you're gonna fly in a uh, airline that's on the multiplayer world of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, these would be pretty cool to have. It'd make it a lot easier. Now, if you're gonna be a student pilot, these are really good to have in. And if you can afford it and you're going for more ratings, these would help out because you can kind of work in your basic functionality and test out theories that will then drive home ideas that you're going to be tested on or need to have knowledge on later. Especially with the switch panel, you can turn things off and on here. You can check your magnetos from here, turn on the avionics, the master switch, all your lights. You also have a gear switch. So if you go with the cheaper throttle quadrant that doesn't have a gear lever on it or lever, depending on where you are in the world, you got it here. The instrument panel is great because it can cycle through a lot of different engine and para sorry engine parameters. It can be a PFD. It can also be a comm and nav tuner. So you can put your frequencies in here via the knobs on the front, set them, and not have to use your mouse to go through anything. And then the autopilot panel lets you set your altitude, your heading, your course, your vertical speed, a lot of different features. And the nice thing about this one is it has a trim wheel. It has a speed arm and off for your auto throttle, which is really cool. Not really necessary, but cool. And also has a flap lever here. So you can do a lot with just this setup. And I know you can't buy this yoke anymore, but you can build yourself a pretty good general aviation cockpit at home for about a grand or less. And I know that's a ton of money. That's asking a lot, especially if you're not taking flight simulation seriously. But if you are somebody out there that really wants to dig through the weeds and find the best products to make your flight simulation experience more realistic, more so than just having fun with a joystick and a mouse, or you're a student, I really recommend looking into some of these products. And in the links and the description below, I'm gonna lay out the basics. I'll have the one, some of the part, products I suggest the basic, intermediate, and advanced setups with some products that you should take a look at, some of which are not even in this video. Because I don't have any of the Thrustmaster products. I don't have the other Logitech uh, products like the jo joystick and the throttle quadrants. So there's a lot of other stuff out there. But if you're tired of throwing your hands in the air out of frustration, wanting to find a way to add realism, this is a good start. Now, the follow-up video to this I'm going to explain the joystick and some of the features on it a little bit better. Then I'll dig into the yoke, throttle quadrants, and the rudder pedals. And also, eventually, the instrument panel, the switch panel, and the autopilot panel. Now, there is another panel. I don't have it, a radio panel, which also makes things a lot easier, being able to tune all your radio frequencies as well. If I had one of those, I'd show it. However, I did have one of the legacy SciTech products. That one did not survive the number two move out of three moves, unfortunately. But if you have questions or comments that you'd like to post below, please go ahead and do it.
I want to make better videos. I want to make good videos for you, the viewer, so you can make informed decisions about your flight simulation, per flight simulation purchases and help you get to where you want to be, whether you just want to play and have fun in the sim, be a professional simmer, or actually go out there and have a flying career or bucket list of aviation experiences. So, Joe from NDB Aviation, thank you for your time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you again real soon. Bye-bye.